if you clone a human brain and then take that brain and put it inside of an animal, have you just cloned a human being and created an animal with rights? This is a question that's very important right now, and people are trying to tackle it because the science is moving much faster than the law. Let me walk you through some of the most controversial studies that have come out and talk about why maybe we aren't going to do them again. Yes, people have concerns. Brain organoids are essentially tiny versions of human brains, and they can be transplanted into a mouse's brain, and they can even repair parts of the tissue and restore function. They could even recover rats from blindness when the visual cortex was damaged. This kind of study has been repeated on a lot of different animals, including monkeys, which was very controversial. And yes, while well, you can transfer a tiny lab-grown human brain into a stroke-induced monkey, more than that has been done. This is actually one of the big issues with organoids in medicine, and that is that there are so many functional studies that have come out, people don't know where to start. Researchers have managed to transplant stem cells, where these kinds of trials have failed in humans, and there's a lot of issues with that. Did they fail in humans because something was not done right? Did the researchers do something else? Could it even be falsified? All of these are important questions before we even begin to look at people. Now this really is a very frustrating point for me because I know people who are suffering with conditions like Parkinson's and ALS and treatments that work in mice or monkeys could be a lifesaver, literally. But because of a long history of things being done very poorly to the tune of, I don't know, plastic tracheas, there is a great responsibility that researchers have to make sure that a method is the best one possible that they do all of their due diligence and consider every possible side effect before putting them in people. Aside from the ethics part of that, at the very least, if something goes terribly wrong, it could set the field back a decade or more. With great power comes great responsibility. We do know that transplanting a human brain organoid does end up taking root in the brain and can even make projections all the way into the spinal cord. But this particular study from 2013 is why intelligence is not usually studied in chimera animals. And by chimeric, I mean having two different cell groups from two different kinds of animals, and in this case, human brain and other animal brain. Human neurons are more dense and tightly packed. They'll also interface with other kinds of neurons if they're just put there, especially because brain organoids are essentially fetal, they adapt. However, the idea of endowing animals with some kind of sentience that they would not normally have is, yes, not super ethical, and it doesn't seem like there's a great deal of purpose. So a study that specifically looks at intelligence is probably not going to happen again. And that might be a mistake, because we might be ignoring suffering that happens. And yes, there are different ways to get human neurons into a mouse. It can either be the brain organoid route, or you can take human neural stem cells and inject them while the mice is still developing, and then they will grow up with human neurons. There's even been advancements in getting human cells to compete more and not being overtaken by other kinds of cell types that is being used for organs. Now this one gets complicated for other reasons they gave mice autism. It's important to note that autism is a spectrum, it's actually many conditions that all have some pretty similar symptoms. Some forms of autism seem very much to be genetic, and other forms can be induced. In this case, it's an anticonvulsant medicine that causes autism in young children if their parent took it while pregnant. They took human stem cells that have been exposed to the anticonvulsant and then put them in a developing mouse. Yes, the mice did show what we would call autism in mice, which involves social disturbances as well as anxiety. More importantly, they are able to definitively say what cell type is causing it when they turn them off. It did ameliorate the mice's symptoms. Now this idea is really socially complicated because autism is, again, a spectrum. It can be very severe to relatively mild, and many people feel that they do not need a cure, and that is fine too. If anything, this study just helps us understand autism more. This would not be a cure because these neurons are specifically genetically engineered to be able to be turned off so that they could investigate the symptoms. It's complicated. Now it's important to note that there are no federal laws that prevent people from cloning people. And Congress has been trying to pass laws for some time that would prohibit making human animal chimeras for research. This is why it's important to speak about these things frankly and honestly. Yes, they're spooky, and I love the spooky aspects of science, but these technologies do have an awful lot of good that they could do. They allow us to study the human brain without actually using a person, and brain organoids are limited when they're not, you know, in a body. We can actually see the functional connections in the human brain and an animal, but we should also consider the potential suffering that could be caused. It is a balancing act. It's complicated. Now I would ask, why have we not cloned people yet? We've cloned sheep, we clone mice all the time, we can clone parts of people and assemble them into body oids, taking multiple organoids and putting them together like Legos, so why not people? While there is no federal law, there is a patchwork of laws that prevent various uses in different states. 
Well, there is that. I imagine if somebody really wanted to make it happen and they had the money to do it, they would. Many clones seem to have chromosomal abnormalities. We may see hundreds of attempts and just get one clone out of it, and that is usually what happens in a lab. You can't really, you know, clone your child 10 times and then just keep the one that worked pretty okay. There's a great deal of ethical concerns, and yeah. So you may be responsible for, I don't know, nine clones of yourself that are just a little off, and then one that's kind of okay. You can see the problem here. Oh, and Minnesota does not touch the issue of cloning for children. Maybe you can, but you can't do it for medical research. So just to try to answer the question, are brain organoids actually cloned people? Not legally, not yet. I could very easily see a world where it became one. I was also really disappointed that nobody talked about brain organoids in the last presidential debate, because I definitely wanted to see people yelling about baby brains in robots. And because people always ask about my opinions on these things or try to parse out my feelings based on my reactions, my feelings are complicated. Yes, I understand that these things have the potential to maybe not be very ethical. Part of me is just really wants to see what happens when mad science runs its course. But a much bigger part of me acknowledges that this has the possibility of doing a whole lot of good and helping science as a whole. It will save lives, it will develop treatments that we never could have imagined before because we didn't have access to a model that worked. There's a big difference between a mouse's brain and a human brain, but you can make an intermediate that kind of looks like ours. We do collectively as humanity have a responsibility to treat our lab animals ethically. The reason I work with microbes rather than mammals is because I really don't have the heart for it. I would be taking home my research subjects. I can't do it. If you want to hear more, you can check out these articles and follow for more.